Ayevali Atenyi, Mwami wa Babra, who will be sharing God's word with us. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. Lord, to reaffirm your promise which you have fulfilled in Jesus Christ that you are God with us. And so this morning, you who is with us, we ask that you'll speak to each one of us. Again, Lord, in simplicity and in clarity. Please, Lord, help us hear you speak to us as individuals, as families, as a church, as a nation. Yes, Lord, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to our first reading from Isaiah chapter 7. We will spend some time reading a few verses in that text, and I pray that God will speak to us. In this month of December, we have been reflecting on the presence of God, God being with us, and it comes in timely with the season, Emmanuel. And this morning, we specifically look at God's presence with us as a sign of liberty, liberation from oppression of sin, liberation from enemies of God, but also our own enemies, God's presence with us. And this is what inspired the people of Isaiah in his time. It inspired them to live by faith and trust God, especially when they were surrounded with many pagan nations and those that didn't understand Yahweh, the God of Israel. But I want to pick up a few verses. I noticed that we read from verse 10. I just want to go back from verse 1 of chapter 7, and I ask that you'll follow with me in your Bibles. In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, the king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to wage war against it, but could not yet mount an attack against it. When the house of David was told Syria is in league with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and Shea Jashub, your son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field. And said to him, Be careful, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these two smoldering stumps of firebrands at the fierce anger of Rezin and Assyria and the son of Remaliah, because Syria with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah has devised evil against you, saying, let us go up against Judah and terrify it, and let us conquer it for ourselves and set up the son of Tabel as king in the midst of it. Thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within 65 years, Ephraim will be shattered from being a people and the head of Ephraim is Samaria and the head of Samaria is the son of Remaliah. If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all, the word of the Lord. And so we are speaking of a time during or a time of King Ahaz when he ruled Judah, an evil king Ahaz was. He was not a godly king because he chose to worship idols. He even offered his own sons in the fire to false gods. And so this evil influence did not just stop with Ahaz, but it went to the nation, to the people of God. They started worshiping idols, and this led to their punishment and the defeat of Ahaz and the defeat of the entire nation. And so the events we think about, even the promise of a child born of a virgin, has this background that King Ahaz is not just 
a king, but he's an evil king who has deliberately decided to turn away from the Lord. And when he heard that northern Israel allied with Aram to fight against him, he was terrified, his heart was shaken. And the image used in this text, in this text is that the shaking was like the trees in the forest that are shaken by a wind. It was such a terrifying event to know that people have allied themselves against Ahaz and his nation. It was such a shaky situation for him and that fear overwhelmed him. He was overwhelmed with fear. The entire land could not imagine defeat. They were totally defeated and listen, they were defeated before even the fighting took place. They were defeated before they engaged in warfare, before they even started fighting. But this fear is because it is a fruit of idolatry. They have chosen to turn away from the Lord. And each time you turn away your face from the Lord and face anything else or trust anything else, fear will always overwhelm you. Let me say three things by way of encouraging us again from this word of God. Number one, God often works beyond what we ask, think, or believe, even in the face of our weaknesses. Can I say that again? That God often works beyond what we ask. God works beyond what we think. God works beyond what we believe, even in the midst of our own weaknesses. We see that at this time, God came to the people of Judah. God was with them. Even when they were too terrified to go to God, God in his mercy, in his grace, came down to his people. Ahaz did not make any attempt to meet the Lord, but God, out of his mercy, came to Ahaz, came to his people, and he gave them this message in the midst of a crisis when they are under attack, when everybody is allying themselves against the people of God, instead the people of God should go to God, but they have not even got to God, but God chooses to come to them. It's nothing but his grace. And so God gives them a message, and listen what it says, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Be careful, Keep calm and don't be afraid. The Lord spoke kindly and tenderly to ease the fear that was overwhelming his people. He spoke so calmly so that his children would receive the assurance that they have not been abandoned, that they are not by themselves. God is with them. And he calls the enemies of his people smoldering stubs, of firewood. He says these are two smoldering stubs of firewood. In other words, they will burn and soon they will be over and no more. Praise the name of the Lord. They were fierce and mighty before Ahaz's eyes. However, they were small in the sight of God. Yes, they were terrifying to Ahaz. They were terrifying to the nation of God, but they were such a useless thing in the eyes of the Lord. Their great boasts were nothing but empty words. Then the Lord makes this promise in verse 7 to verse 9. Yet this is what the sovereign Lord says. Read with, just follow with me. It will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aram in, is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only Rezin. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Remaliah's son. In other words, despite their boasts, Rezin and Pekka, they were ungodly men. They are mere men who are not godly. And so God who is sovereign above nations, above human beings, will uphold his children regardless of the threats that surround them. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh yes, a hand clap to the Lord. The Lord is sovereign. He's the one who raises rulers. He's the one who makes men, and so because he makes men, he's able to bring down those men. That is what these men that are threatening Ahaz 
have no idea about. The Lord had already promised that David, his descendants, were going to reign for eternity. That nothing is going to overwhelm them. That the throne of David is going to thrive and remain. There is going to be reign in justice and righteousness. According to 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12 to 13. The Lord would not allow Judah to disappear. No, he cannot. And he is a faithful God. He's a God who keeps promises. And so God, no matter the fear surrounding his people, he is going to carry out his salvation plan. He's going to keep his promise. It's just that he has allowed Judah to become weak because of his punishment as a result of Ahaz's idol worship. It's their king who has turned away from the Lord, and so they are being punished because of turning away from their God. However, because God promised, he would preserve the nation. He would preserve the line of David for his own salvation purposes, not for the good of the people, not because of what the people have done, but because of what God is doing in humanity. Hallelujah. There's no question that I has had sinned greatly. The Lord nevertheless wanted him to repent and live by faith. Number two, faith in God is more important than any size a nation's army or economy is. Faith in God is more important than any size a nation's army or economy is. Let me explain. It is important, friends, for us to keep faith in our God. It is very important. I wish I would explain this more or even better in a language you can understand better than English. In many ways, we turn to other gods and we cannot be nice to ourselves because we are Christians. Several times, our hope is in our money. Our hope is in our connections. A lot of the time, our hope is in our achievements. Many times, many nations will find their hope in their military power. Doesn't it amaze you that for all, at least those of you that are like me, you know, the whole time I have known Israel to be strong, up to now, more than two months, they have failed to get hostages from a small strip eh, of Gaza. Do you take that for granted? It's not about military might. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the size of the economy. It's not the muscle of your finances. And consequently, because we have trusted these things, the same way Ahaz and his cohorts trusted these things, we end up terrified. We end up anticipating broken families, random acts of violence. There is this falling apart. There is that not turning out the way we anticipated. In many ways... God has allowed these things as a way of disciplining us so that we don't just get lost in the things going wrong, but we come back to our senses and repent of our sins and trust the Lord and get back to the Lord. Hasn't he promised us that when we humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways, he will hear our prayers and heal our land. Hallelujah. So God gives a wonderful message of comfort and encouragement to Ahaz, but Ahaz ignored the Lord. He wanted help from an army of a nation. He ignored the message of God. However, the Lord is patient with Ahaz. Look at verse 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. This time, the Lord invited Ahaz to ask for a sign to confirm the promise. Even then, Ahaz rejected God's offer. 
It was foolish, but Ahaz went ahead and rejected the offer of the Lord. And Isaiah speaks to Ahaz. He speaks to Ahaz and his son, Shia Jashub, and who was with him. And he says, come on, there is going to be a remnant that will return. Because that is what that name, Shia Jashub, means. A remnant will return. By way of God speaking to Ahaz, that God will preserve a remnant of his people. As long as they are faithful to him. Yes, there is this threat against you, but God will preserve his remnant. You're not going to be destroyed. And let me encourage you, those of you of our time, that no matter what is happening in the world, God will still have his remnant. Praise the name of the Lord. Science and technology can invent and do whatever they want, but God has pronounced himself that you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And that is not in our power, it is in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God will preserve our generation. God will preserve the generations to come because he is sovereign. Hallelujah. He will have his remnant. Remember, God often goes beyond what we ask, what we think, what we believe, even what we qualify for. Not, the Lord did not leave Ahaz alone. Ahaz has no interest in trusting God. He has his own plan. God rebukes him, yes, but he also gives him a sign. Look at verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. So despite his refusal to trust in the Lord, God who rules his people because of his sovereignty, despite their mistakes and sins and rebellion and unbelief, God does not give up on us. He really does not. And so let me tell you, God is with us, and therefore we cannot dismiss him from us. Amen? God is with us to the very end. The sign of a child born to a virgin, Emmanuel, God with us, emphasizes to us that what God really wants his people to do and to believe is that he is with them constantly. The whole point of giving that sign is that God wants the people to be assured that they are not on their own. He is with them. And like many signs in the Old Testament, this one would be fulfilled both immediately but also in the future. So in the time when this text is being written or in the time when these events are happening, indeed God was with his people and he delivered them from their enemies, but also in the future, Jesus Christ, like we had in the gospel, would come again born to a virgin woman. Praise the name of the Lord. And so as the enemies of God were making noise, all the people needed to do was to look at the sign in the child born to a virgin in the time of Ahaz and be reminded of God's promise and God's presence. Each time we are intimidated, each time we feel terrified, we should remember the cross because that is the climax of a child born to a virgin who overcomes even death. Hallelujah. God reminded them by this sign and he reminds us this morning that our deliverance is assured even in the midst of troubles. And it does not end here. I wish it ended here. I has, would have had good news. However, it continues because of his stubbornness and unbelief. God added to his original prophecy of punishment in verse 17, the Lord foretold that the king of Assyria would attack Ahaz and Judah. It would be worse than anything Judah had experienced since Ephraim broke away. And so Isaiah describes Judah's shameful end, humiliating defeat. And when you read in that text, he compares it to having your enemy shave your head and legs and beards. 
by the time your enemy gets you to that level of shaving your head, you are totally humiliated. And that is what God compares it to. The land would be so devastated that only thorns would grow there. The economy would be devastated. Everything, all their wealth would be lost. And even as I come to the close, I say to you that worldly options will land us in trouble with our God. If we do not wholeheartedly devote ourselves to the Lord and seek worldly options, we will soon land into trouble. He has rejected the Lord's help because he wanted to get help from Assyria. He could not trust in God because he trusted Assyria. And the same way, if we do not stand firm in our faith, we are not standing at all. Number three and last, God is not just with us in trouble. He came down to dwell with us constantly. Isn't that good news? God is not just with us in trouble. He came down to dwell with us constantly. The prophecy of a virgin childbirth goes beyond what any religion can describe. It goes beyond what prophets can even imagine. The God that promised deliverance to Ahaz became God-man on Christmas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the only way to our salvation is to trust in that Lord, Emmanuel. It is that God alone who can save us from all our trials. It is that God alone who can save us from our troubles. And when God is on our side, the enemy is doomed because God never loses any battle. So if we trust in anything else, listen, if we trust in anything else, be it money, science, technology, military power, name it, name it, we will be defeated, we will be humiliated. Like Ahaz and his cohorts, and it is in a record that whoever chose to trust in anything that is not the Lord, it didn't go well with them. What makes you think that it will go well with you if you deliberately choose to turn away from the Lord? Because his word is true. Yesterday, today, and forever, everything else will pass away, but his word will remain true. Yes, I do agree. Sometimes we face challenges that overwhelm us, challenges that we do not have capacity to withstand. Our call in such times is not to panic, It is not to turn to worldly options or to trust human beings. Not even the man of God mentality or prophet. God is with us and so we should turn to the Lord. When we are overwhelmed, we should not be covered and veiled from the truth that God is with us. And so we can come to him even now. Remember he has spoken to us and said, it is no longer on this mountain or the other mountain. God is spirit and so he's seeking for people, worshipers that worship him in truth and in spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. God with us is such good news that we no longer have to go to Jerusalem. God with us is the truth that encourages us when you get an issue on Monday, you don't have to wait for Sunday to go to All Saints Cathedral. Hallelujah! You can access God right there. But also, even when you are so terrified that you cannot pray well, God incarnate, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, whom we celebrate on Christmas, is our great high priest. He will take our unworthy prayers to the Holy of Holies, and God will answer our prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. God is with us. Shout with me. God is with us. Come on, shout it again. God is with us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you for your presence. 
Thank you for your promises that in your word you would say to us, you will not leave us alone. You will not abandon us. You might be here and you have made mistakes like mistakes of Ahaz. That several times you have sought worldly secular options. Several times because of fear, because you have been terrified, you have turned away from the Lord and trusted other things. And you want to bring repentance in the presence of God. Would you just go to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Would you just turn to God now and pray right there where you are. Remember, friends, that God works beyond what we ask for. God works beyond what we even think. Some of you, because of your mistakes, you feel so unworthy. But there is good news that God does not treat us as our sins deserve. He gives us an option of turning to him all the time. And he is with us. He's with you there where you're seated. I want you to surrender to the Lord. Trust in God. Faith in God is more important than any economy, than anything else. And so, Father, we come to you. And as our children, as your children turn to you in prayer, will you answer those prayers? Just go ahead. Mention that terror and ask that God will liberate you. That God will liberate you from fear. He will liberate you from doubt. That God will restore to you faith in him. That your faith will not fail in the face of the storm. Just go ahead and pray, child of God. Yes, Uberanange. Yes, Utonde Kangabo. Matabanga Manji. Amuya Ganga Munji. Jesaba Museno. One more time, yes, we better not give. Yes, we better Yes, we God bless you. Amen.